Let's talk about the uh, outcome of the 53rd GST Council meet which took place over the weekend. In terms of key decisions, GST Council has de decided to roll out uh, Aadhaar-based GST verification in a phased manner across the country. The issue of rate rationalization and fertilizers has been referred to the group of ministers. And of course, I mean, there is stuff which has been done, stuff which has not been done, and we'll talk bo about bo both. Uh, Pratik Jain is partner in, uh, at PwC India. And we also have uh, MS Money, partner, uh, GST at uh, Deloitte India. Gentlemen, great to have both of you here. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, joining us. Uh, uh, Prashant Desai. Pratik, if I can start with what is top of mind, which is online gaming and casinos, right? Now, there was a fair bit of uh, a lot of newspaper headlines which essentially uh, said that there has been no relief. Nothing was discussed, no relief for this particular sector where there was clarity which was uh, awaited. But I just wanted to uh, get a sense from you. Is that how you would uh, uh, read this? Because, you know, they are essentially introducing an amendment in Section 11A, uh, a clause which enables the waiver of retros retrospective taxes. Uh, how will that... Is that... Is, is that uh, not some uh, a glimmer of hope, relief aimed at not just one sector, uh, but which perhaps enables relief for not just online gaming and casinos, but other sectors as well? I'll just explain this for our viewers, please. No, absolutely, Prashant. There is a glimmer of hope. More than a glimmer of hope, I would say. Uh, I think the government is perhaps contemplating to use that provision uh, to provide relief to certain sectors, perhaps online gaming as well. So what has happened in this uh, council meeting is that they have now approve the enabling provision, which allows the government to provide retrospective exemption. That kind of provision was there in a pre-GST era, in excise laws, etc. That was not there in GST law. Now that provision will be there once the amendment is uh, passed, which is likely to happen in the budget session. After that, the government can uh, provide a, a retrospective exemption. And perhaps the online gaming uh, would also find favor at that point in time, of course, government will take, need to take a decision. In this council meeting, nothing has happened on, on gaming per se. But once the enabling provision comes in, uh, I see a possibility of that happening. No, so this will now have to be, uh, so this is a process, right? Uh, this will uh, have to be taken through the parliament? Yes. Uh, Pratik? It have to be taken through the parliament because it's amendment in the act. And, okay. uh, of course, uh, once uh, that happens, uh, It then, comes uh, back to the... G Council and then I think they'll have to take it up sec sectorally, right? I mean, they'll have to apply Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Correct. Correct. But, uh, you know, so uh, names like Delta Corp, etc., right, which uh, runs casinos, uh, has been under pressure. It's a, it's a, it's a, would you, I, again, I mean, without uh, sort of talk, talking about specific stocks or some uh, companies, would you say, uh, you said this is more than a glimmer of hope. So it is material in that sense. Yes, I mean, look, ultimately, whether the government wants to provide relief to the online gaming or not, that's for the government to decide. What I'm only mm -hmm. saying is that after the enabling provision comes in, then government can not only do gaming industry, they can provide, there are things about, you know, uh, foreign airlines, shipping uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. lines, and, and so on, right? So now they will have power to provide retrospective exemption. And, and I think that that power will be used now. Whether it will be used for, I mean, uh, online gaming or not, that remains to be seen. But what, what we were reading in the media is that the government was contemplating. So if, if the intention is to provide that exemption, then that provision is likely to be used once, uh, you know, it, the act is amended. Mm. Mr. Mani, uh, is it a bit of a, as, as uh, Pratik and I was discussing, is it a, is too much a leap of faith uh, to expect? I mean, one can argue and say that if they did not want to provide relief to the sectors which, which were affected, why would they introduce this uh, amendment? Is that the right way to look at it? I would actually go one step uh, behind that, Prashant, to say that mm. more than anything, uh, what the amendment is, is that there is a genuine desire now on part of the government mm. to recognize trade practices and business practices which, which may not be aligned with GST. And trade practices, business practices are unique to each industry. Online gaming has had certain, you know, manner of calculating, uh, whether it is the gross gaming revenue, whether it is anything else. Each sector has had a different way of operating. And those practices have been in work since a very long time. It's too much to expect the business, all businesses across a sector to change their trade practices just because the GST law cannot be interpreted in a straight-jacketed manner. 
So having a provision which says that we henceforth will recognize trade practices, business practices provided it is uniform, is to me a great step that they have taken this time. As far as online gaming is concerned, I don't think there is uh, any reason to feel doubtful on whether it will be applied or not applied. As Pratik said, we will obviously have to wait and watch in terms of uh, what exactly is the notification and how they interpret this for them. But on a broad basis, this also is an issue that has arisen because the business practices are not aligned to the GST law. And now that they have taken the power to recognize various trade practices yeah. through obviously yeah. separate notifications. Uh, insurance is one of them where they have already given a clarification for the future. And they have also said that the existing matters will be dealt with on an as and as is where is basis. But even that will require a recourse to Section 11A at some point of you know time. So to my mind, this is a step that ideally should have been in GST when it started. But the fact that it at least coming now is fantastic for all businesses. Yeah. Do you, do you expect... Uh, so two things. One, uh, you know, the... the I, I was just telling Pratik, a lot of the newspapers, I mean, uh, over the last... Uh, I mean, yesterday, today, etc. It's all no relief for online gaming, etc. You would, you would disagree with that, right, uh, Mr. Mani? I would say that an expectation of an instantaneous release, Instant you know, an immediate yes. gratification for online gaming companies uh, was yeah. possibly not, uh, you know, in yeah. place. Maybe that was, uh, uh, yeah, that was that was not a correct expectation as well. Of, yeah, correct. but, but so the that is my, that brings me to the second point. Now, we've got, do you, do you expect this to be taken through the parliament this session? Absolutely. So, so okay. my sense is that the reason why this GST council meeting took place on the date on which it took place is because the legislative amendments that they wanted to propose, they could take up during the budget session of parliament. Immediately. Together yeah. with the finance bill. And therefore, yeah. once the finance bill is passed at that point of time, they will be free to introduce the new sections and all the other legislative amendments that are required. Okay. Now, uh, Pratik, uh, two questions to you. One is, anything else which stood out to you from the council meeting with important implications? And second, uh, there's expectation of gas being included under, being under the, uh, brought under the ambit of the GST. Uh, now, again, it's not, uh, it's not come through. It's not, uh, you know, they've not ruled it out. They said they will try, uh, right? Uh, uh, that's what the finance minister said. Uh, your thoughts? Yeah, so the first question first, uh, I think two, three things will stand out. One is mm -hmm. that there is some sort of amnesty scheme that government brought in for GST past demands for years 17, 18, until 1920, where if you pay tax, then interest and penalty will not be charged. I think that's very significant, particularly because there was a Supreme Court judgment in case of Northern Operating, uh, after which a lot of companies had to pay uh, GST on secondment of people coming from outside. Uh, there, a lot of companies have paid tax, but on interest and penalties. Now, interest and penalty will be waived off, not only in that case, but any other case uh, where there is no fraud, etc., is involved. So that's important. Second is anti-profiteering provisions. There is a sunset clause which has been introduced. A lot of us were, uh, were having a view that anti-profiting provision was supposed to be there only for uh, for a short period. And it's been almost seven years since GST has been implemented. Uh, it helps the businesses to decide the pricing and let the market forces apply. Uh, so anti-profiting provision is extremely important. The last uh, in my list is rate rationalization. There is a group of ministers which was constituted earlier for rate rationalization. Now that GOM is being sort of reconstituted because uh, a lot of changes have happened. Now, Bihar uh, Deputy CM is uh, going to be chairing that. And I see a hope that in the next 12 to 18 months, the GST rates will be simplified. As far as gas is concerned, uh, I think that uh, there is a good chance that uh, ATF and natural gas uh, will be included at some point in time in GST. Uh, hopefully, some of those structural changes uh, will be discussed in the, in the next uh, GST Council meeting and subsequent. Uh, there was a larger consensus on gas, I think, which is emerging. We'll have to see uh, how much time will it take, but uh, it should come in GST uh, sooner than later. Uh, got that. Uh, fair enough. Uh, Ms. Mani, you want to add anything uh, to, the, to the list of what Pratik already mentioned? Yeah, a few more things. One is in terms of intent, it was very clear that the objective was to really simplify GST. And a couple of uh, you know data points in that in terms of the fact that the government is really sincere about really making GST simple for businesses. 
One was the statistics that was mentioned, which said that less than 2% of the effective taxpayers have been issued a notice. It's not that there are notices issued to everybody. The other is the fact that I'm seeing for the first time that there is now a threshold limit faced for the tax authorities to file an appeal. So they have come out with three different threshold limits for appeals and for High Court and for Supreme Court. And below that, they will not be able to go ahead and file an appeal unless there is a malafide which has you know, occurred. So the mechanical manner in which the revenue authorities would go for increasing the litigation and you know, choking up the entire litigation process will now come to an end. I just wish there were something similar uh, where businesses did not need to appeal up to a certain threshold where there were repetitive you know, matters. But the fact that they have looked at it and they have looked at various other measures uh, to really simplify the ease of doing you know, business, to me says that the next phase of GST as we move into the seventh year of GST is going to be how do we make it simple for all businesses? How do we take away the pain points? And how do we really listen to what the industry and trade is saying and then act on that? That, to my mind, was the biggest takeaway. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining in and adding value to, uh, you know, the GST meet that was this weekend and giving us a lowdown on exactly what uh, the intent of the meet was and what we can expect going forward as well.